Well, hello, and thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm Pastor Rita Gant, and my husband, Pastor Tori, and I, and our church family here at House of Power Outreach welcome you to this broadcast, and we are excited about uh, getting in the Word together tonight and uh, just enjoying the presence of the Lord. Um, if you'd like to find out more about our church, House of Power Outreach, you're welcome to go online at hopochurch.org and find out what we believe, and if you'd like to support us, there's an opportunity there for you to do so. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. We ask you, Lord, to help us to focus in and listen and hear uh, what the Spirit would say to us tonight, Lord God, that our hearts would be open and our minds would be receptive, Lord God, to be changed by the power of your word, Lord, and the power of your love tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Great. Well, uh, tonight, uh, the message that we have for you is titled, Getting Results. And um, my byline here is knowing the word and acting on it is the quickest way to get the best results in your life. So we all like to get quick and lasting results. Like when we start a new exercise or a diet plan, we're always looking uh, to see the results and how quick we can see the results. Uh, we expect to feel better and even look better uh, just as soon as possible, don't we? Uh, tonight we're going to talk about getting spiritual results that last. Spiritual results and spiritual results that last. In order for us to get the results that we want and need, we must first find out a few truths in God's word. So I have three uh, points here on how to get uh, results and get results at last. Uh, the first one is to get wisdom, and it's very important. Um, what it is is uh, we need, the first thing I want to talk about is wisdom, what it is, why we need it, and how we can get it. In order to be success successful in getting our best results, we will need to begin with wisdom. It's the, it's the beginning thing. It's the, most, it's the most primary thing. It's the principal thing. Wisdom is the ability. Here's the definition for wisdom, okay? The ability to think and act with knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight. That's the Webster's Dictionary uh, definition of wisdom. I've also heard it defined as the application of knowledge. Um, the Word of God says in Proverbs 9 and 10, and I have it in the NLT here, fear, which is the reverence and uh, respect or holy respect of the Lord, is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. So fear or more accurately reverence, great respect, and holy awe for the Lord is the foundation for wisdom. Without this uh, holy awe or reverence and great respect for God, we don't even have the foundation for wisdom, which is the ability to think and act with knowledge, experience, understanding, common sense, and insight. And the word here says that we need to have knowledge of the Holy One to have good judgment. And I think that it's important to emphasize having good judgment goes a long way toward getting results, okay? Having good judgment goes a long way toward getting uh, results And the Word of God here says that knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. So we're just building a little foundation here for you to understand how to get good results. So just bear with me. So in order to get the best results in our life, we must get wisdom. It is the principal thing, according to Proverbs 4, 7, or the most valuable thing in life. When we have wisdom, we will get results. Uh, think of it like this. If we have the knowledge and the insight for, like, let's say, a particular program, and I'm using diet and exercise as a, an example because it's easy for everyone to understand. If we have the knowledge and insight for a particular program of diet and exercise that we know gets results for our bodies, then that is wisdom for that given situation. It's the knowledge and the insight uh, that we need in order to get results. So let's just take that concept and apply it to any given situation. If we have the wisdom that we need for that situation and we apply it, then we will get the results, okay? So the first thing is getting the wisdom or getting the knowledge, getting the insight. Um, the next step is to know the word for yourself, okay? If we're wanting to get results in any area in life, we must know the word for ourselves. Not just hear it from someone here and there, but actually make it ours and become intimate with it. I'm going to explain that to you. So where do we get this knowledge so that we can apply it in wisdom to get the results that we need and want? We can find knowledge in the word of God. 
Reading and studying the word will give us the knowledge we need for any given situation. So first we must reverence God, respect him, and then get the knowledge that we need from the Holy One through the word of God and through the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we must know the word for ourselves. I wrote that down. We must know the word for ourselves. Um, in the Bible, the word know means to, to be intimate with. Like Adam knew Eve and she conceived a son. We need to be intimate or we need to know uh, the word. So we need to be intimate with the word of God so that we know it for ourselves. That is, um, that it is not just something that we've heard, but that it is something that is ours, that uh, we are connected to and personal with. When we know the word like that for ourselves, we will conceive things that look like God in our lives, and we will have great and lasting results in the endeavors that we have. So know what the word says. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, faith begins where the will of God is known. We can't act on our faith if we don't know what God's will is for us. And how do we find out God's will? By getting close to him, reading his word. We can find out a ton of what God's will is just by reading scripture. As we spend time in God's word, we learn who we are in Christ and what his will is for us. We are then able to rightly divide the word of truth. When we get God's instruction through his word and the leading of the Holy Spirit, we can be assured that we are on the right path to success. So knowing the word for ourselves personally is a second step toward getting results. Okay, first we need to get wisdom. What is, what is God's uh, idea on it? You know, and you can find that in the word. But we need to be, uh, second, we need to know the word for ourselves, not just, you know. We can get, let me just explain. We can get wisdom on something by hearing a preacher speak. And the wisdom of God can can come forth, and you can say, "Oh my goodness, that's that's wisdom. That's uh, God's insight and knowledge and understanding." And you can get that wisdom, but taking that word and making it your own and knowing it for yourself is the second step. Okay, um, so knowing the word for ourselves personally is the second step toward getting results. The last step is simple, but it's not easy, and it's acting on the word or doing the word. Um, so then we have to actually do what the word, what the Lord tells us to do. And, you know, we can sit here and say that that's, you know, oh, yeah, sure, I do that. You know, but really, do we? Like, do we apply everything that we hear, that we know is God's truth? Do we apply it? Uh, Matthew seven twenty four through 27 says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will like him, liken him unto a wise man, talking about wisdom again, which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. We probably all learned this little story when we were growing up in Sunday school or some way, um, through some way, you know, vacation Bible school or something. But um, this is a scripture that's talking about the man that built his, built his house on a rock, and the rains came, and the storm came, and the flood came, and the house stayed still, I mean, stayed secure. And then it says, And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. If we don't build our lives, which is our house, our lives, on the rock of the word, on the truth of the word, and do the word in our lives, then we become very foolish and we start building things on on things that can shift and, and be shaken and um you know i've seen so many people build their entire life around a, another person or a career or even a sport and you know when the storms of life come all that can be shaken will be shaken and uh, you know great is great is the fall of it and, um, you know, it's important for us to, um, to get the results that we want in life, to make sure that we build our lives on the truth and on the word of God and on our relationship with the Lord instead of building it on, uh, you know, what seems to be the most popular or the most um, logical thing, you know. So if we want success in our lives and we want to avoid disaster, then we must act with wisdom and build our house on the rock of the word. We must do what the word tells us to do. 
Okay, so how do we do that? Like if we, we read in the Word, first we need, we need to get into the Word and make the Word ours. Okay, so we read the Word, and it says, forgive, and you shall be forgiven, like what we talked about last service. Um, so then what we need to do is forgive, right? That's pretty simple, right? Simple, but sometimes not so easy. But it can be uh, if you'll just do what, you're, what you know to do that's right. So like, let's say if you read to judge fairly and do not cheat, then you judge fairly and do not cheat. So, you know, um, if you read in the word to speak a soft word that will turn away anger, turn away wrath, then you need to apply that and do the word and uh, speak a soft answer and turn away wrath. When, um, I'm going to tell a, a quick little funny story. wasn't so funny at the time. But uh, when Pastor Tori and I first got married, um, I didn't really know how to communicate that well. I, I was a believer. I loved the Lord with my whole heart. And, uh, you know, I know that that's what he was attracted to was my zeal and my love for the Lord. And, uh, you know, but I hadn't really been taught how to be in relationship with anybody. I hadn't been really taught how to, you know, handle that. And um, so the first few years of our marriage, I'd say at least the first two, were really pretty pretty rough. Um, I didn't, my feelings got hurt all the time. I didn't know how to, um, how to communicate because, you know, we grew up just communicating. You've heard me say this before through anger and frustration and, you know, yelling. And so I didn't, I didn't know how to even act, you know, with another person so close to me. And, um, so I had to get in the word and, and read the word and apply it to my life and I had to face some hard truths about myself, and I had to get my act cleaned up. I had to change things about who I was and how I reacted, and, and you know, um, I needed to, to apply the word. And when I started doing that, I started getting better results in my relationship and quicker, better results. So when you take the word of God and you make it yours, you know it for yourself, you make it yours, and you act upon it, then things start changing. Things start happening that are for the good. And so it's important for you, you know, you can be a Christian. You can believe in Jesus and believe that he is the son of God, that he died on the cross for your sins, that he rose again on the third day, you know. And you can be saved but still live a life of misery and uh, unrest and a lack of peace uh, unless you take the word of God and make it yours and act upon it, you know, use the wisdom of God to change who you are from the inside out. And when you do that, the results are astounding. They just, um, they just completely change the negative. They change the negative of who you are and, you know, what you're about. And so it's important if you want to get good results in your life, uh, you just have to know it starts with you. You can't just say, I want that person to be that way, and I want that person to be that way. And, you know, it starts with you. God starts with you. And once you start applying this knowledge and, and living out the word of God in your life, changes happen. And then when, when God is able to, when you allow him to make the change happen on the inside of you, then it starts dominoing out into all your other relationships and all your other situations. And results start getting better and faster and better and faster, quicker and more lasting. Uh, but it starts with you. And uh, it starts with me, you know. It starts with us. So if we want success in our lives and we want to avoid disaster, then we must act like the man that built his house on the sand. Uh, we must act with wisdom and build our house on the rock of the word. We must do what the word tells us to do. If you read it, then do it. And you need to be reading it. You need to read it and do it. Just hearing uh, a word, you know, once a week, it's, it's good that you do that. You know, once or twice a week, that's great. But take that word and study it out and read it for yourself. And, you know, the more you read it, the more it comes alive to you. And, uh, you know, you understand it more. And the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you, who came to dwell in you when you became a, a believer, He's there, and he helps you to understand it more, and uh, it just comes alive for you, and, and uh, you get that revelation of God, and, and, it, and it just changes you. The Word of God just changes you, and 
you know, for the better. And so, but you can't have that change if you don't get that word for you, for yourself. Um, you know, it's got to be yours. And so become intimate with it and reread it and, you know, take this message that I'm doing and, and take the scriptures out and, and read them again for yourself and read them out loud or, you know, if you want to. Do, read them to yourself. If you, just read them and meditate on them. That's studying the word, studying the word. And let the Lord reveal to you. If you want to write down what God is putting in your heart about that scripture, you know, get your little journal, a piece of paper, something, and just write it down and uh, let it come alive to you and change you. And once that happens, you've got the wisdom of God going in your life. You've got uh, having the word for yourself and acting on that word. You're going to start changing, and things are going to start changing in your life. And I just want you to know that um, this little process is its just so good. It's just so good for who you are. Um, you know, it, it could just really change your circumstances and get you the results that you're needing. If you're desiring peace in your life, if you're desiring change, um, the Word of God is your answer. Uh, you just need to get in there and make it your own and act upon it, act upon it, act upon it. That application of knowledge is true wisdom in your life. So you start with wisdom, you get the knowledge, you act on it, and you get more wisdom. And it just changes you, and you start getting the results that you really need and want. Okay, so see, it's simple, but sometimes not so easy because we have to, you know, make the changes by, uh, by making all those little changes of, of uh, you know, instead of snapping at somebody, take a second, let the Holy Spirit help you. I used to have to go in my bathroom and count to ten. I would get so angry. You know, when we were first married, I would slam doors and do all kinds of silly stuff like that and knock things off the wall. And it's embarrassing to talk about now, but that's all I knew was how to react to my emotions. And now my emotions have to react to what I know is right. And so I have to get them in line. I even had a challenge yesterday. I got, uh, you know, irritated or frustrated about a situation that I misread, and, and I got angry, and I just had to I had to get through it. I had to just make myself calm down, and I had to pray and uh, get my friend to pray for me. And, uh, you know, I just got through it. It didn't take, you know, it wasn't that long of a situation, but because it's a lot better now than it used to be. It used to be days that I would be mad, you know. So the more you do it, the better you'll be. Amen? So uh, simple, <laughs> maybe not so easy, but definitely doable. It just takes doing. James 4.17 in the NLT says, remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. James 2.17 James 2.17 in the NLT says, in the same way, faith by itself is dead if it doesn't cause you to do any good things. Uh, or more, more often put, the scripture has said, faith without works is dead. I like it in the NLT, though. It says, in the same way, faith by itself is dead if it doesn't cause you to do any good things. So we need to be found doing good things. And like I talked about last service. Um, so in order to get good results, results that last, we must get wisdom, know the word for ourselves, and act on or do the word that we know. And remember, um, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So if we're believing God for something, faith like any other force must be applied in order to gain any benefit from it. It needs to be applied in your life. Faith does. So just like we eat physical food, our bodies turn that food into strength. Then the strength in the body must be applied, released, and activated. The same is true with faith. The spirit man consumes spiritual food, God's word, and then that spiritual food produces spiritual power, which is faith. And faith is released in two different ways, by the words that we speak and by our actions. Okay? So I know that was a lot, but you can just kind of back that up and go over that again if you'd like. Um, John 3.21 in the NIV says, Whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. See, we won't, we won't have to be, if we live by faith and we continuously do what is right, we won't have to hide in the shadows. We won't have to be ashamed of who we are. We can come out into the light and say, you know what? I'm doing everything I know to do that's right. I may miss it sometimes, but, you know, I get back up, uh, Micah 7, 8. I think I misquoted that a few weeks ago uh, when, I was, uh, when I was quoting Micah 6, 8. 
about what does the Lord require of you. But Micah 7, 8 says, Rejoice not, uh, thou, rejoice not, O my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in the darkness, God will be my light. And so whenever we live in the truth, we, can, we, can, we don't have to hide who we are anymore. We don't have to be ashamed of it. You know, it, it's just a better way to live. It's just a better way to live. Um, James 2.17 again, here in the NIV says, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead. And then one translation said, Faith without correspond, corresponding action will not work. So here we are living this lifestyle of faith and being Christians and working hard to do what we know is right. Um, we just got to make sure that we're just not getting the knowledge, but that we're actually applying it and doing it. Amen. So start by putting God's word into your heart. Believe it. Say it with your mouth and act accordingly. The word tells us that our God meets our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19 so we need to begin to talk as though that is true, because it is. It's already ours, okay? We must release our faith in the word and talk and act like the word is true. If it becomes ours intimately, then we will make the change to talk and act like the word is true. Then we will see the desired results, okay? So then we're actually we're bringing our, our uh, knowledge. Uh, when we start acting on that knowledge, we're acting in faith. And so when we're acting in faith, guess what happens? Results come. Because God rewards those who diligently seek him. Okay? And he also is very pleased. That's the only way to please God is by faith. And, uh, you know, you can't please him by, you know, all the works that you think you need to do. Because, you know, works without faith is not good either. But faith without works is, is definitely not good. So we need to make quality decisions uh, today to read and meditate on the word of God and to act on that word. Um, and then finally, James 3.13 here in the NLT says, If you are wise and understand God's ways, you will prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. See, wisdom brings forth humility in your life, and, and that's a good thing to have. When we do these things, we can be assured that we will get the results that we need and that we want. Um, we're talking about, um, you know, when we first got married, Pastor Tori and I, um, and I didn't really know how to act. Uh, praise God I had the Lord because I don't think we would have made it, you know. Um, but we both loved the Lord, and we loved each other, and we were both willing to put in the work and, uh, you know, um, work on the, on the relationship. Uh, you know, don't be deceived, um, relationships are work and and, the, and it's important for you to know that um, it's a good work it's a good thing with uh, it can have great results but you can't just be in a relationship and after the newness wears off just not put any work into it because if you do that then you won't have a good quality relationship and it'll eventually fall apart plus it needs to be your relationships need to be founded on the word of God and and have commonalities um, uh, in the things of God and uh, if, if you don't have that, then it's really hard for them to stay uh, together. Don't know where that's coming from, but that's part of uh, something free there. It's not on my notes. But when we do these things, we can be assured that we will get the results that we need. So um, get wisdom by, you know, getting God's word on the situation. Make that word your own and then act upon the word. And so knowing the word and acting on it is the quickest way to getting the best, best results in your life. Amen. So we've been just doing, I know that uh, a few months ago, I, I, I know the Lord put on my heart that we were going to be doing, I thought at that time, a series on, on uh, you know, building and strengthening your faith. Well, he just, you know, spoke to my heart this week and said, that's what we've been doing with these, uh, these couple of months here with me doing the Wednesday services. And I did uh, last Sundays as well. But we're building and strengthening your faith. And uh, it's important for you to be active in your walk with Christ, to be actually doing something. I, I'm very pleased, and God is very pleased that you are, uh, you know, listening to these, uh, these uh, broadcasts and, and, and listening to the Word of God and taking your notes. I know a lot of you have told me, Miss Rita, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there with my notepad and, and uh, you know, taking notes and... Um, 
one good friend of mine said her little one got out her little notepad was it was kind of mimicking her mom while they were taking notes together I thought it was so precious and uh, you know it's good to train up a child when they are young so that when they're older they won't depart from it but um, I am needing to close but I, I just want you to know that God is for you he's never against you He's there for you, and he is definitely wanting to help you to grow and to become better. And he desires for you to get the results that you want and need. And uh, so here are some quick steps in order for you to do that. Um, we love you, and I'm going to pray for you real quick and close out. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, that we'll take this word and hide it in our heart, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that we will... Um, we will do these things, Lord God. We will get wisdom, which is, you know, you primarily, Lord God, how you would handle things. We, would, we will get into the word and make it our own, and we will act upon this word, Lord God. And we know that you'll bring the results, and you'll bring them to pass, Lord God. We just thank you, Father, for your truth. Uh, we just love it more than anything else, Lord God. We love you, your presence, and we're so grateful that you care so much about us, that you are instructing us and guiding us with your word and your Holy Spirit. We just honor you and we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for all that you are to us. You're so personal to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank you again for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>